Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video and today we're finally giving the secondary weapons a little love because these weapons are really not getting enough attention let's face it even when searching for the best setups it's more likely just smgs and ars and people don't really care much about their secondaries however these weapons are your last resort in many situations and can really make the difference of life and death imagine going empty on ammo and you switch your pistol instead of reloading which is something most of us don't do right but yeah, jokes aside, it's really important to have a trustworthy weapon as the last resort. And just because of that, we're going to take a look at every single secondary weapon in Battlefield 2042 and choose the best setup possible for them. We've done the same for most of the weapon categories now, and we have a playlist for those videos as well. I'll put the link to that down in the description so you can find your favorite weapon there. Don't forget to give that a look as well. Also, if you find these videos helpful, or you're a consistent viewer of the channel, consider subscribing because it only takes one click and you won't be missing on the future videos. With all that said, let's get things going. Just a quick reminder though, the gameplay here is not related to secondaries because it was hard to capture actually entertaining gameplay for this weapon category and that would make the video boring. So the gameplay is just irrelevant but entertaining here. But the setup for every weapon will be shown in the end, just like previous videos, so don't you worry about that. So for the first weapon, we've got the G57, the first sidearm that you unlock and one of the best ones, if not the best. It's got a burst fire mode as well, making it a pretty strong companion for when you just find yourself in those empty mag situations, when you've got no choice but to switch to a pistol. You get a drum mag and all with pretty decent firepower. It's really a complete package. So for the attachments, things are pretty much straightforward. For muzzle, I just prefer factory barrel. I've tried tactile compensator, but it somehow messes up with the horizontal recoil to a degree where it's not worth having that extra accuracy. So I'd go with a factory barrel and that's it. We're not gonna be using suppressors here because in this case, it decreases damage and I'm absolutely against that. You can use them if you want them anyway, but in my setup, they will not have a place. For under barrel, the LS1 laser sight gives you some hipfire accuracy, which is really a must in a burst fire weapon. For ammo, close combat drum, close combat extended, and then subsonic should do the trick. For weapon sights, you don't have a lot to choose from, just iron sights and red dot sight, and obviously the red dot's gonna give you more clarity. So here's the final setup. Next up, we've got the MP28, which is a pistol with a conversion kit, and it's really a good weapon, even in medium range. It deals a decent amount of damage, and it really is an accurate weapon because of that conversion kit, which adds a stock for more accurate shooting. Anyway, for muzzle, I'd go with tactical compensator, which has proved itself worthy and give you some accuracy in the expense of some more recoil. For under barrel, go with the LS1 laser sight because you will find yourself in a lot of hipfire situations with this weapon. For ammo, standard issue drum, standard issue extended, and then subsonic should be a good combination. And finally, for the weapon sights, I'd rather a TV2X because first, the weapon is capable of hitting medium range targets and second, I just like it more in the range of 2 times to 3 times scopes. And now, here's how the setup should look like. Next up, we've got a monster weapon, the M44 Magnum, which is a scary revolver in the hands of a pro, and it just feels like a small sniper rifle, to be honest. Like, you can really go for those heads in medium range, and obviously, it's a one-shot headshot kill in under 100 meters, so... If you get used to hitting headshots with it, this will be a worthy sidearm to have. For attachments, as classic as it is, you don't literally get to choose anything for muzzle or under barrel. For ammo, you're just better off sticking to high power because armor piercing is just trash. And lastly, for weapon sights, go for a red dot first and then Raven 4X for those long range headshots. And the setup is just ready looking like this. Next weapon is the PF-51, which is more like a submachine gun than a sidearm because this thing is fed with a 50 round P90 magazine. You definitely don't get as much damage because the barrel is just shorter, but this weapon can really come in handy, especially when you get used to it. You might find it a bit odd to start with, but you definitely get used to it after a while and then this thing will become a reliable companion, to be honest. For attachments, I just find Champion Muzzle Break better on this weapon. It gives me the feeling of less recoil and I like how it feels. For under barrel, again, go for the LS1 laser sight because the hipfire accuracy on this thing isn't the best and you need some more of that for sure. For ammo, I'd go with standard issue and then subsonic because the damage over range of the standard issue rounds is just better than subsonic. And lastly, for weapon sights, just pick your favorite red dot sight and you should be good to go looking like this. Next weapon is the NVK P125. This weapon, because of its design, which is completely fictional and there is no real world model for this, has a crazy damage even at long ranges and it has a pretty decent fire rate as well as a burst fire bug. I mean, this is really a complete package here. 
For muzzle, I'd stick to factory barrel due to the lack of a better option. Then for under barrel, I'd go with the LS1 laser sight. For ammo, standard issue extended, then standard issue, and then subsonic. The standard issue rounds on this weapon deal significantly more damage and that's why we're choosing them over the subsonic rounds. Finally, put your favorite red dot sight on the weapon and it's ready to go. Next up, we've got the Super 500, which is a pump action compact shotgun. I remember it was pretty strong and then got nerfed in the middle of season 6, I believe. And now it's just more balanced, but not as fine as before. Anyway, for muzzle and under barrel, you have no attachments, but for ammo, the game stats actually tell you that Flechette ammo has more firepower, but just like always, that's just exactly the opposite. Sorry to break it to you, but based on the stats of Sorrow's spreadsheet, Bugshot just deals more damage and way more damage, guys. So definitely make sure to choose it over the Flechette. Slug rounds, on the other hand, are not one-shot kills even in under 5 meters. So they're pretty much useless and nobody with only one brain cell left alive wouldn't choose that because even the headshot multiplier is one times, meaning your headshots won't deal extra damage. Put your favorite iron sight on the weapon and it's ready to trigger some people looking like this. Next up we've got the L9CZ, the last sidearm the Battlefield 2042 ever got, and I gotta say, it's a good one. Decent damage, pretty quick when it comes to fire rate, and you just can't hate this weapon because it's really handy. For muzzle, since the recoil of this weapon almost doesn't even exist, I'd go with Tactical Compensator for some more accuracy, then LS1 Laser Sight for underbelt because we always appreciate some more hit fire accuracy on any sidearm. For ammo, Close Combat Extended, then Close Combat, and then Subsonic should be good enough. Just put on a red dot sight and things should be fine and the setup is ready, looking like this. Next one is the BFP-50, which is just another name for the legendary Desert Eagle. This might be the hardest hitting sidearm after the M44, but this one is just way faster since it's a pistol, not a revolver. So you can spam people with those heavy rounds, and before they comprehend what's going on, they're literally just dead. For muzzle, you don't have a choice. For under barrel, we go for the LS1 laser sight, just as usual. And for ammo, I prefer close combat over high power, just because of that extra fire rate that you get. Of course, if you want more damage over range, go for the high power ammo. Lastly, just put on the red dot sight and things should be red. And now we've got the vault weapons. This is really unfortunate to say, but none of these four vault weapons has any attachments or let's say some attachments to actually make a difference. Because of that, it's going to be a waste of time to go over them one by one because these weapons don't even have weapon size to use. That's just sad because they are pretty decent weapons in some cases. Just use factory barrel on all of them and then use all magazine options that you have and that should do the trick for these weapons. And with that said, this episode also comes to an end. Thank you all guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed and liked the content. In the next episode, we're going to go over the sniper rifles. They have a lot of fans and I'm pretty sure that video is going to be a cool one. So stay tuned for that and until next time, stay cool.